Welcome to this video on interdependence. As ever, a good place to start was with the definition. So, the definition of interdependence. Interdependence is mutual dependence between things. Uh, in this case, living things, because we're talking about uh, biology. Um, a mutual dependence. Uh, that can take a lot of different forms. I'll give you some examples. Predator populations depend on prey populations. Flowers depend on bees for pollination, and bees depend on flowers for nectar. Clownfish feed on small invertebrates, which otherwise would harm a sea anemone, and the faecal matter from the clownfish also provides nutrients for the sea anemone. So the anemone gets, gets a lot out of it, gets protection, gets fertilizer. What does the clownfish get out of it? Uh, well, it's protected. It's protected from predators by the anemone stinging cells. Um, the clownfish itself is immune to these stinging cells. So we're talking about relationships between organisms. Let's look at competition. What do animals compete for? Well, they compete for uh, food, for water, space, and mates. Um, what do plants compete for? Light, water, um, and nutrients. What's the difference between inter and intra? Now, think about, uh, think about the internet. The internet and the intranet. Now, you may have a school, college, or a workplace that has an intranet, and this operates within the organization within and that's what intra means it means within intra specific competition is between members of the same species the internet is not restricted to one organization it exists between them and so inter specific competition is between different species that's how i remember it like the difference between intranet and internet so intra species competition within species inter species competition between different species in the picture on your left, you can see a tree and a vine competing for light. Let's move on to look at the term niche. A niche is a particular place or role occupied by an organism with, uh, within an ecolog ecological community. A particular place or role occupied by an organism. So, for example, a fox's niche might be that it inhabits uh, uh, forest edges and urban spaces, they eat small mammals, and they're active at night. That's its place in the ecosystem. That's what it does, what it eats, where it lives, all that sort of thing. And similar species will occupy similar niches. So red squirrels and grey squirrels are two examples of species which occupy similar, but ever so slightly different niches. Now I mentioned at the beginning that predator and prey populations are dependent on each other. And that's what this graph shows. First of all, notice that the predator population is usually smaller than the prey population. And to understand why, uh, have a watch of my video on energy flow. Now, let's start here, where the prey population is at its highest. The predators have got lots of food, so they survive long enough to reproduce and raise offspring. So predator populations increase, and prey populations are going to decrease. By this time, the predators are so numerous they're competing with each other, there's a lot of intraspecies competition or interspecies competition. We're talking about general predator populations here. Um, there are less prey around than before, so the predator population is going to start to drop. By now, the predator population is dropping. The prey are not being hunted so much, so their numbers start to recover. And on and on it goes in this way. Now, to end this PowerPoint, we're going to have a quick look at three examples of symbiosis. First one, parasitism. This is when one organism, called the parasite, lives on or in another, called the host. The parasite benefits because it gets a warm, stable environment. It doesn't change very much. It doesn't get cold or hot. It stays really nice and constant. And there's usually lots of food available. That's the main reason why these, these creatures live on or in us. Um, it's to feed from us. Uh, the host is harmed. So technically, here's an example for you. Technically, an unborn baby is a parasite. The definition of parasite is one benefits and the other is harmed. And in pregnancy, the baby benefits and the mother goes without. She, all the, 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 the nutrients that we, she would otherwise have gotten are given to the baby. So there you go, a baby is a parasite. Um, another relationship, commensalism. This is a class of relationship between two organisms where one organism benefits without affecting the other at all. Good example of this, barnacles. Barnacles living on a whale. They get moved to new food sources as the whale swims around, but the whale itself is not affected in any way, and that's commensalism. Mutualism. 
the relationship between flowering plants and pollinators. Uh, that's usually mutualistic. The plant gets its pollen moved to other plants and the pollinator gets energy rich nectar. So there we are, a quick run through of interdependence. I hope that was useful to you. Thank you very much for watching.